there. Yep. Damn, this guy's jacked. And metallic little armbands, too. I love his too. metallic armband. That is very square, and that would be very uncomfortable. He's got some weird vein structure there, and I think he's got a tumor in his left arm there. Blow it out your ass. <laughs> this, uh, this ain't running too hot. It's, uh -oh. a, little, it's a little, uh, whoa. Although this could have just been how it ran back in the day, and I uh, remember it being better. Um, I don't know, but you keep damaging yourself. No, I got shot. Now I'm going to damage myself. And we got to watch out for this guy. Ouch. Wow, you got... Uh, you got Man, we really should have just played Commander Keen. This was a mistake. This is some Captain Cosmic bullshit. It's a mistake because you're, you're lousy at playing it. That's true. I mean, I'll give you that. And uh, moral of the story is uh, don't Wait. let the hands in the thing do I the thing. I forgot that the cool thing about this game is that you can shoot upwards. That was a, that was a cool thing? It was a cool thing in 1992. Actually, this is probably before 92. This is like 90 or 91. I don't know about that. One unit of health. Awesome. All right. Now we get to go up here. See, Duke Nukem 2 oh. was really cool because it had a little bit of narrative that... Uh, comes across as you play. Yeah, it's a very so story so heavy so game. Rather than you just randomly shooting guys who are wearing space suits in their little There's a plot. I see. Yeah, that's right. And we're gonna go up here, murder some more people. I forget if this is like a space station or or what. I think it's a space station. Oh I got the rockets, nice. A rocket launcher is very deadly. It is the strongest of any weapon. Any weapon. I see. All right. Next uh, next week we gotta we gotta do something better oh, than this. Oh, you are die. <sighs> Duke, Duke, you're killing me, buddy. No, but you you somehow popped right back. I see, this is one of those classic games I that really your epic chin. knows players and knows that when they die, they like to start at the beginning of a level all the way back where they started. Because otherwise, how do you get your money out of a game, right? Yeah. I mean, if... I just, I just love how that, that creeper guy is bending the bars. He's like... Rah, rah. He's able to bend them, but not escape, even though I was able to escape. Although, I mean, you saw the guns on this guy. It was kind of insane. Anyway, is it? Uh, are we past eleven oh five? Have we wasted enough people's time? No, I, I think we 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 should totally waste more <laughs> of their time. Hello and welcome to the uh, Friday Beamdog stream, where we talk yep. about Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Two, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment, the enhanced editions of all those games, of course. Siege of Dragon. Siege Spear. of Dragon Spear, and of course Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, the game that you've all tuned in to see, uh, because I mean, really, that's why you're here. Neverwinter Nights is awesome. It's got its moments. It does have its moments. Yeah. And uh, we have some exciting news about a development update, which is leading into a full update in the very, very near future. So uh, before we get into talking about Neverwinter Nights, uh, I guess it's time to do our uh, little bit of news and uh, sword chat, as we typically do. So first of all, we uh, well, well, sometimes we do sword chat. You do sword chat. You threaten me with blades and I knives. I threaten and you with blades. Off so, camera. So, so you'll notice that I'm mostly clean shaven. Mostly clean shaven. You'll yeah. notice that I'm not. So uh, I'm in preparation for the stream of many eyes. So I tell have, me. I've partially shaved my face. Tell me about this stream of many eyes that you are forcing me to attend. I, I'm, I'm actually going to force you to wax your chest <laughs> for it. <laughs> By force you, I mean I'll probably just go and get some molten wax and throw it. <laughs> it's one of those scenarios where if I show up without a wax chest, you'll you'll say, you know, hey, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, you have to do it. Um, so the stream of many eyes that's happening uh, next week, next weekend, yes, uh, it is. from Friday to Sunday in Los Angeles. Yes. Wizards of the Coast has taken over a uh, studio space or a studio stage in yep. Los Angeles, and they are uh, turning it into a street from Waterdeep. And uh, they have all kinds of crazy cosplayers and D&D events and live streams going on. And they reached out to us and said, hey, we want you guys to come. So we said, hey, why don't we come with we'll way more stuff than we originally agreed to? We'll, we'll be there with bells on. <laughs> See, other companies are showing up. We're like, yeah, we'll set up a booth. We'll sell things. No. Beamdog does things silly. 
we're gonna we're gonna roll in, and uh, I think it's already been announced that uh, Lee will be serving as our support person, and at the same time, he will be playing the role of Biff the Understudy. Biff the Understudy is the first announced character from uh, Baldur's Gate that will be there. Uh, yes. However, there is going to be a character from Icewind Dale at the uh, Stream of Many Eyes. Do we want to reveal that one, or do we want to hold that off? I think we should hold off on that. All right. Are we going to reveal what uh, you're going to go as? Nope. Can we reveal what I'm going to go as? Y we could. Okay. Well... Let's let's just take a look at. Uh, so you may or may not know that the portrait for Rasad is actually Phil. So, therefore, we have decided to send Phil as Rasad because mm -hmm. it, it makes sense and it makes harmony. Now, a lot of you are going to be. Uh, if we can switch over to my desktop, you're going to look at this picture and be like, "That doesn't look like Phil. He doesn't have a beard. His head's all shaven. He looks vaguely handsome. So it can't be me." But that's where you're wrong. It is me. It was just very, very heavily updated. The joy of really good artists is they can make pictures look good. Now, the hero shot for Rasad, this is what we're basing the costume off of. So uh, I'm obviously this buff. You are this you, buff. You look at that, and you're like, yeah, that, there's the guy that played uh, the mummy from Brendan Fraser, Fraser's that's, The Mummy. That's totally. What was his name? Uh, let's look it up. The Mummy, 1999. Because the internet wants to watch us search for crap. That's right. <laughs> Or see what's going on on the internet today. Oh, there's new news. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cast. All right. It was Arnold Vosloo as Imhotep, the mummy. There you go. He looks like... The mummy. No, he looks like <laughs> Michael Keaton's brother. Michael Keaton's older, yeah. slightly angrier, taller brother. He's not quite Batman, but he's bat adjacent. Yeah, he's bat adjacent. He's he's got a longer, taller face. Yeah. So it's like somebody took Michael Keaton and gave him a bit of a stretch. I could see him being like the evil businessman rival to Bruce Wayne. Yes. Anyways, if you're out there watching Arnold, we say this in jest. I, I, I adored your performance. We, we love your face. Yeah, it was great. Anyways, yep. so that's what Rasad looks like. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, we put together a costume. Or actually, we didn't. We didn't. Corey downstairs at... Uh, so the, the question was, who makes our costumes? Yeah. There's this store nearby called Sanctuary Curio Emporium. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the proprietors of said such store, she, uh, she built our costumes for us. Mm -hmm. It turns out she's pretty darn good at it. So we've got a, a little communication network set up with these guys. Uh, they're right below us, so we kind of stomp our feet in Morse code. Yeah. And that's how we communicated our desires. Yeah. To Once in a while, them. we stick a head down through yeah. the hole in the floor. So if you live in Edmonton and you want to uh, buy a bunch of really cool, kooky costume stuff, check out Sanctuary. Or you want want a more awesome build. They can... Uh, mm -hmm. They can hook you up. She was, uh, Corey was pretty great, though. We sent her this picture of Rasad, and she's like, yeah, I can whip that up in a couple hours. And she did. <laughs> I went downstairs, and she's like, and here's the tabard. And I'm like, how did you make, did you just have uh, the symbol of Salune lying around for some <laughs> other nefarious purpose? Yes. But uh, no, she put it together, and it was awesome. Yeah, she did a good job. And then your co costume, of course, she's working on as well. My but we costume, can't reveal. My costume is, it's a pain in the butt. It is a pain in the butt. It's going to be heavy, and I'm going to be sweaty. And I'm actually secretly thinking of ways that I can take my cool shirt from my race car and somehow wire it into like a sack or something that I could carry around that had like ice cubes in it and have it circulate cooling water around me. But uh, that will probably not happen. That probably because won't that's, happen. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a little fancy. It's, it's a little beyond the pale, Trent. Yeah. So um, there is a book available that you can buy now, Morden Kynan's Tome of Foes, which is pretty awesome. I especially like the bit about the blood war. I'm a big fan. Go to the, the. There's a section that has a bunch of names of different uh, companies for demon legions in the Blood Chapter War. Chapter one: The Blood War. All right, I gotta, I gotta look this up. The, the demon, the the demon company names. It's hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. There were some good ones. Anyway, so in the in the Blood War, if you're a demon or a devil, you're organized into well more devils that are organized properly, but um, each little legion or cohort of demonic or devilish soldiers has a hilarious little name. Um, so, like, the elite devils, I think, one, one group of elite devils is called Damned Good, which is just delightful. That is. Um, Grisat. I'm a huge fan of Grisat. Grisat. I've always been a huge fan of Grisat. He was the guy that uh, imprisoned Joaquin, wasn't he? And she sold him a bunch of her divinity, and he's like, <laughs> sucker. 
Sucker. What do you guys think about Joaquin? Pretty cool? No? I don't know. God of coins? Om um, seems pretty happy with them. You're not going to find it. This is going to take way too long. It will take way too long. I'm sad. Anyways, pick it up. It's got a bunch of cool pictures. Yep. Question from the audience. Is Trent cosplaying as Deacon? Well, the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> Using a very expensive... One could never fit my massive frame inside the tininess that is Deacon. Would not happen. Just giving it away, man. All right. Uh, we I'm, I'm going to be Grisette, man. We ha we have I'm a, totally uh, going to do Grisette. I'm actually going to save this question because it's really technical and we have a bunch of uh, news to do first. Fair enough. And I'll let you think about it for a while because oh, it's very um, confusing. Oh, you should totally take a look at Beamdog.com. Oh, right. We spent dollars and redid the site. At least five of them. At least five of them. <laughs> yep. So the site looks totally different now. It looks, uh, it looks like a store. And we also um, changed payment providers. We're actually working, partnered with Exala, so we can actually take payment in multiple forms now. We're not merely constrained to enter your credit card, please. Yeah, actually, this, is a, this might be a fun topic for people to hear about. What is it like to run a digital store? Um, it's it's like sh say taking a salt shaker and going like this in your eyes. That's what running a digital store is like. So if you live in North America, at first glance, I might be like, hey, if you give people credit cards and PayPal, I mean, that covers 90% of people, right? That's yep. wrong. That is incorrect because uh, the rest of the world has very different views on uh, payment providers and payment methods. There's a ton of different options. So yeah. So Exala, um, we met with them a couple of times at, uh, at various conferences. Um, we may have drank beers with them late into an evening. And uh, as a result, they were able to, to persuade us that we should come and join them. So my favorite thing about using Exola is, I mean, obviously they have an insane variety of payment options that they accept. But you'll go on there, and one of the first ones you'll see is, like, Subway card. I know. So, you know, if your parents loaded up your Subway card to get you lunch, yep. you can spend it on video games, yep. apparently. When you're at university and you have your Subway cards to buy your meals, you can forego those meals and play games. Beamdog, eat fresh. All right, what else do we got going on? So we got a new Beamdog website. It's really cool. Please go check it out. Um, and, of course, next week, because we're going to be at the stream of many eyes, we won't be doing the stream here. Yeah, I think we had some stuff on sale on our, on oh, our right, site. we do, yeah, actually. We do. If you uh, head over to Beamdog.com, you can pick up Planescape Tournament Enhanced Edition. For 60% off. 66% 66% off. Woo, who set this up? I don't know. These people. Go yell at Lee. Different dollar amounts don't add up to, you know, it's 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 hard to get the exact percentage. Uh, Icewind Dale, Siege of Dragon Spear. I mean, why'd we put it on sale so much? Oh, it should wow. be less. We should we should barely put it on sale. It I mean, should that's, be like that's that's these, really these are a great for you and Lee games Sina. that have a ton of value. I used to speak to Lee. I hear he was on the stream last week. How did he, that go? He was. It, uh, he's not as witty as you are. I heard. Rumors. rumors that you were making fun of me. We, we, we would never make fun of you, Phil. I have no way to confirm <laughs> these rumors, but it's I also don't believe them because it seems so out of character for both of you. Phil, so. Phil I mock you when you're present, so if you're not present, there's I would just, nothing to mock. I would probably mock you more. It's, it's, it's nothing to punch down into. Um, so, um, as well, if you're a Clicker fan, the Codename Entertainment guys have their... Idol Champions is now on Google Play and on the App Store. So if you want to play that, you can do that. Um, oh, and so uh, here's, here's a question. Do the new GDPR rules affect Beamdog? This is right in my update. We've updated the Beamdog.com privacy policy. Watch yes, out for yet do. another GDPR email in your inbox where you can be so excited about it. So and say, yes, I agree that you can look at some of my information that is of no value to me. Because uh, I think about how I, I browse the internet, and I'm like, dude, if you want to go through my browser history and see me search for three hours on various kinds of steel and their various properties, knock yourself out. So here's the if you have nothing to hide perspective. On the other side is, you know, you don't need to do anything with my data. Anyways, yeah, GDPR is uh, going to impact us, but luckily not a huge ton because we don't really do anything with your data yeah, other than uh, send you emails sometimes. Pretty much. Yeah, um, pretty light with your data. 
uh, some people have been asking, what is GDPR? Uh, uh, you can go uh, Google it if you desire. It's a new law in the EU. But basically what it is is ghost dog petting and rescue. So every company that does business in the EU has to provide services to people that own ghost dogs. So if you have a dog that has passed away and has become a phantasmal spirit, um, every company has to offer the ability to pet that dog and also the ability to rescue it from the afterlife. I, I think I think Phil has has indulged into something did I medicinal read, or did, herbal. <laughs> did I read a different document? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's general the, uh, data protection something something. That's the GDPR from Universe Seven yep. Seven Two Eight. So <laughs> anyway, now in our scheduled program. That was terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was terrible. You were riffing on it, and I was like, dude, it's, it's taking going too nowhere. long. The joke's yeah. not landing. You're, you're going so nowhere. I can see the wall coming. And it yep. struck me. All right, so I think that's all of our major mo news. And yeah, we were going to talk to Niv today. We were going to talk to Niv today. Who is so, Niv? Niv is awesome. Well, who is he? He is the awesome. Okay, but who is he? Niv <laughs> is a former community modder, maybe known as the guy behind the Neverwinter Vault. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, he's been involved in Neverwinter for quite, quite mm -hmm. some time. And uh, we, uh, we started talking to him, what, three years ago? Possibly longer. We brought him in as part of our initial advisory group, mm -hmm. and then uh, we brought him into the team, and he is now the technical director on the project. That's right. Which is insane. So in about 15 minutes, we are going to call Niv up on the miracle of telecommunications called Skype. Wait, are we using Skype or Discord? Skype. We need Skype. Oh, man. Skype. Yet another Microsoft Anyways. product to let you down. Um, so in Ouch. a little bit, we'll be chatting with Niv and just kind of talking about, hey, what was yeah. it like to be uh, involved with the Neverwinter Nights community all these years? And uh, what was it like working on NWNX? So stay tuned for that. Oh, um, I put a handle on my karambit and I sharpened it up a bit. It's really nasty for taking out boxes. It's pretty cool. But uh, unfortunately, I used a uh, rosewood for the handle and the rosewood's pretty oily. And I tried to varnish it, and the varnish stuck on it in a weird way. So I'm going to clean that off. And yeah, it was just a fun experiment. Just so a wicked karambit thing. Yeah, it's basically a raptor claw slash brass knuckle in one. And uh, I brought in, I finally put a handle on my chef's knife, which I really like this chef's knife because it's got really neat pattern. Have you done any chefing with it? Um, I have not done any chefing with this chef's knife, but um, it is a low layer count Damascus. Uh, 1095 and 10 uh, and 15 and 20 and uh, the handle is zebra wood zebra wood now that zebra of course wood. comes from zebras of course yes you uh, <laughs> you you have to first petrify the zebra, petrify a zebra and then, and then uh, harvest its wood carve it into a handle of some sort yeah that's I don't even want to talk about zebra wood anymore you have, you have officially killed my desire to talk <laughs> zebra wood <laughs> A uh, question from the audience. Have you guys had a chance to check out the Bard's Tale Remastered preview? Uh, no, I have not yet. I'm curious about it, though. Um, I've, been, I've been playing some dead fire. I'm going to look it up. Oh, it's so pretty. Our friends over at Obsidian sent us over a couple dead fire codes. So a couple? I'd, I had to fire that up. And, and play it. Yeah, you didn't get one. I got one. You I got, got one? the first. I, I skimmed off that list before it even went into the raffle. I told him not to give you one. I told him Phil doesn't really want to play it, guys. He's just... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I actually, I already had a copy, so I just gave that extra key away. So. Oh, I see. Whoops. Bastage. One list sale for the Obsidian guys. All right. Sorry, dudes. Question for the audience. With all the weapons you make, have you ever gone axe throwing? It is a real thing. There's axe throwing places in Edmonton. Yes, there are. There are. Um, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't gone formal axe throwing, but I have thrown axes. Informally, however, he's hawking axes out of cars. <laughs> just, you know. Yeah. What, what, do you, what else do you throw at signs yeah. when you're driving along a highway and you're bored? <laughs> um, here's a question. Are you guys aware of mod.io, mods API? Uh, now we are. Now I have heard the. NWNE? I have heard those words. And any chance of seeing it being used for Neverwinter EE? Um, this is the first I've heard of it, so it's I know nothing. Gander. And uh, as a result, I can say nothing about in, it. In real time, let's evaluate it and make a decision. <laughs> okay. Well, my first uh, uh, that, that, piece that of feedback is that their website isn't working. So no, we're not going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's a question. With the new update to the race screens, are we going to get support for non-parts-based creature models? 
and will we get fixes soon for this to CLS feet underscore star dot two DA read errors and more functionality like selecting feet only at a specific level? This is a question with several tentacles. <coughs> yes. Let's so break are it we down. are we right, going to get support one. for non-parsed based creature models? So I'm assuming you want a solid piece creature that's not part based. So. That's playables, now, playables, it? because they can equip things, are cooked in that way. I Do they mean that they want a cooked humanoid that they can equip stuff on? I think they want to... So the race screens are used for player characters. Mm -hmm. So people want to play as, a, as a basically a skin mesh. Mm -hmm. And a skin mesh can't swap things. They can't equip things right now. Unless they're part of the part-based yep. hierarchy system. So you would have to... Uh, We'd basically have to... either well, those slots on that character, or they just don't show on that character, which is equally disappointing. Yeah, I mean, what you could do, a way of faking it out, would be to hide all the armor pieces and then just use the torso piece from whatever the creature that you wanted you'd, you'd was. You'd still need the, uh, the weapon equip points on the limbs or limb equivalents. Well, now. it depends. There's uh, So Neverwinter internally, when we built it, we had three kinds of creatures. There were simple, which is, I'm a bear, I have claws. There was simple with weapon. It's like, I'm an ogre. I'm using a weapon that's too big for a player character to use, but I need, uh, I need to attach it in some spot. And then there was complex, which is all the part-based stuff. So what you're asking for is a simple bear-type model using a weapon and being able to equip stuff and uh, we currently don't have any way of doing that and I'm not sure I can think of an easy way to make that happen so the answer is uh, maybe <laughs> look at it as always things that get on the Trello I get think, looked at I think we need a more specific and, and actually uh, get accomplished of, of what you're trying to do with it yeah. So uh, there's a question. What's the enchantment on this karambit? Minus um, one, believe it or not. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's currently not sharpened enough. It's sharpish. I can sharpen it more, but I'm starting to question the wisdom of bringing really wicked sharp things to the office. And more specifically around me. Yeah. Phil has a certain flare when he moves things around it's which just, I, fear. I get i get something like a <laughs> knife and i have to i have to spin it around and then i drop it and then my thumb gets cut and then i use my pinky as a as an example yeah it's terrible yeah all right uh question I, i'm actually we should probably go through the updates all right so we actually added some features we would be terrible on the network nightly news <laughs> where you gotta like get through a certain amount of like it'd be like rando chatting uh, about some cat man shot to death in the street today so Trent, any funny gun stories <laughs> yeah once upon a time <laughs> oh and uh the president's been murdered more on that tomorrow bye yeah um, All right. So feature-wise, um, Soren Moeller once oh, yeah, again has been working the on the, the post post process shaders. Um, there's a more dynamic depth of field shader, kindly provided by Soren. Mm -hmm. um, we also added the portrait from the contest portrait winner. All oh, right. So With PO Exor Nova is in there. Um, there's a whole line of fixes here. So on melee attacked and on damage were sometimes not firing. It's fixed. Uh, fix the character creation model viewer crashing for racial type appearances without a valid model. So that was blowing up because bad 2DA data always blows things Just up. Just try catch, man. You never have to crash. <laughs> um, we fixed <coughs> Linux full screen mode. Uh, stereo wave in 3D positional sound popping up erroneously in the tool set has been fixed. Uh, tool set fixed. We fixed the not displaying spells or feats on character sheets. Um, we're now applying the full screen FBOs, we call them, the full screen post processing effects Bows. in a preferred order so that we don't get visual corruption. Because if you enable them and disable them a certain way, you could actually make stuff a little fugly. That's what was causing the ambient occlusion bug in my machine. Yes. Um, yes. We fixed the new game server setting UI not being interactable. Periodically, it would go silly on you. Um, the Polish high-res font has been amended to include the needed special characters. So that's a, that's a sweet one. Uh, hack and TLK preloading is now checked immediately upon connection. So you don't get the joy of going onto a server, creating a character for the first like three, four minutes, and then being told that you can't connect to the server. Was and there screaming in anguish. 
Was there a reason that it was done like that originally? Uh, because that seemed like the thing to do. I think we never we never imagined how crazy hack packs were going to get. We're That's like, fair. people will send our own some models. It'll be fine. It'll be just art stuff. Yeah. And at the time, the concept of, hey, the person hosting the game can just send up 30 megs of data to everyone connecting to them. That's not a big deal. As opposed to the whole, yeah. hey, there's like five gigs worth of hack back here. Yeah. Why don't you grab it? So I guess the missing element was always there needed to be a third party server rather than murdering everybody's persistent world to pull down the hack packs in the module. Yeah. And uh, we're looking at that. Always. Always. Um, we fixed the connect button on server details pane not working properly sometimes. And uh, we also fixed previous next buttons not graying out on the connect button as required. And we fixed a crash where action take item would fail to deposit an item in a full inventory. So it just vanishes. Well, it would just fail. Like so I hand you an object and you're like, oh, my backpack's full. And the object just vanishes as if he went back in time and killed his parents. <laughs> exactly. That poor sword. All right. Uh, question about uh, ooh, Infinity Engine 2.5. So last week, the Baldur's Gate 2 Loke beta went out. This, or sorry, next week, we're going to be doing BG1. And then after that, we are free and clear to finish this thing off and call it a day. So uh, after 2.5 is done, uh, we're probably going to take a little bit of time to uh, get Go into the desert, eat some peyote, yeah. and go on a vision quest. 2.6 will be off in the distant future, but uh, 2.5 is going to leave this, these like, games in a fantastic state. Great spirits. Give me guidance on what 2.6 should be. <laughs> oh, peyote. The Why are you such a harsh master? Of Baldur's Gate appeared to me in the sky and said, yeah. "You must add Spanish localization to Baldur's Gate two and two six. And thank, I was like, "Thank you, gods." Okay. <laughs> so that's coming. <laughs> um, all right. So we had uh, some questions from the audience about uh, the Neverwinter Nights uh, spell incantation words. So when when somebody casts a spell based on the school and the type of magic, they say some uh, weird stuff. Yep. Now I don't actually know what they are in Neverwinter, but I remember in Baldur's Gate it was Latin. There was some of them was la some of it was Latin. Yeah, and then each school of or or uh, classification of magic would have like a different thing. So like if you're casting uh, necromancer magic, it would be like. Libra Mortis Cure or something, or Vita Mortis Cure, which is life, death, and command, I think. I don't know. Anyways, what was it in Neverwinter? Same deal? Same deal. Yeah. Um, we, we we actually went a little past Latin, and we started to throw some made-up made words in there as well to try and pat it out. Why not go deep in the Forgotten Realm lore, you know, pull out some Dwarven words, some drow? Because you try and figure out the pronunciation to those and try to tell the voice actors who's sitting in the booth how to pronounce some Dwarven thing right. To be fair, Jennifer Hale knocks that stuff out of the park. We threw a bunch of just random awful drow language into uh, Viconia's script in uh, Seed of Dragonspear. Yep. And Jennifer is in the booth and she's like knocking them out of the park. She's like, oh yeah, it's an Iblith, whatever. And I'm just like, why am I even here? Because yeah. ostensibly I was supposed to show up to this session to help with pronunciation. Yep. And she's just like, no, I don't need you. I'm pro. So um, um, Here's a know. question. Uh, when the scripting slash faction slash journal editor, et cetera, is pulled up, you can't change the focus back to the tool set. Is this something that will be changed so you can put those windows in the background, pull up multiple windows, et cetera? Um, so we've been working on this. There was a problem with a couple modal windows when implemented in a non-modal fashion were basically being complete jerks and not behaving in a proper way, so we're still twiddling on this. So. Okay. This one is uh, is working on. There Hello. is a question um, here as well. Um, can we get Trent to flex for science? The answer is no. You cannot. He's not your prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be dictated to. I flex on my terms. Uh, just send us like a bunch of heavy weights and then <laughs> put the instructions for what to do with them on the bottom and then we'll uh, lift them up on stream and you can see. So right now I'm getting a flashing call Niv. We're supposed to call Niv. All right. So we're going to use the magic of technology, a.k.a. these we're little gonna, tiny headphones. Headphones There's in. earwax on this. Whatever. That's you. I'm always concerned. I need the right Ugh, ear and the right. God. See, you don't even we look. Design these ears. This is terrible. All right. So we're going to be calling Niv, the uh, technical director on the Neverwinter Nights project. We're going to be chatting about all things Neverwinter Nights, what yep. it was like to be part of the modding scene uh, well ahead of the Enhanced Edition, and uh, what he's excited about coming up for the Enhanced Edition. 
Oh my god. And uh, we've got our uh, stuff ready to go here, so we're going to call him right now. I can hear Phil's voice in my ear doubled. It's really creepy. Isn't it fantastic to hear me say the same stupid things over and over and over and over and over That and is over. my daily existence, my friends. My daily existence. All right. Hold hello. On. Hello, hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I had the wrong headphone in my ear, so I could not hear you initially. I'm just glad we're not playing this game again. Like, can you hear me now? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for people that are just uh, tuning in now, we tried to get Niv on the stream a while ago. And uh, because our internet is uh, done through a pair of tin cans with some Ethernet uh, strung between them, we uh, were not able to handle the bandwidth of both uploading video and downloading audio. So now that problem's been fixed. So Niv, how are uh, you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. As you can see on the stream, uh, Trent and I are enjoying ourselves and uh, wasting everyone's time by telling stories that don't really go anywhere, <laughs> as what, we typically that's do. That's what we're all about. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Niv, you came on board with us as the technical director on the Neverwinter Nights core team. Yeah, quite recently, actually. So um, I guess the question is, how did you get this experience? How did you get to the point where uh, you could take on a role like that? How did you get involved with the Neverwinter Nights community? Oh, that's a long story, honestly. Um, we got time. <laughs> <We're just laughs> yeah, we're burning the internet's time right now, so it's all good. So I've been waiting for this game for a long time. Like I was what, 15, 16, maybe. I, I watched the E3 trailer. I was so excited for it. I wanted a uh, a game where I could play finally Dungeons and Dragons online and not actually have to meet other people. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I think I played the campaign once halfway through, and then I immediately jumped into multiplayer, stole a server, um, appropriated a server. Um, How did know, you appropriate a server? <laughs> Honestly, just uh, just by doing what was needed, the original owner didn't want to play anymore, mm -hmm. didn't want the, the, to bear the load of running a server because it's actually a lot of work. It is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. It just worked out. I took over the server. It was a German one like 10 years ago, maybe. And uh, yeah, uh, that's been such a load of fun on this game. Like mm -hmm. I... I dug into it. I, I tried to understand how it works. I started modding it for a bit and uh, I fairly quickly turned to like disassembling it, taking it apart, seeing what I, what else I could do with it. It was such an approachable thing. We were kind of amazed from our side how much you guys figured out by just tearing things apart. We're like, hey, we yeah, have this source been... code and uh, they totally figured out how most of this stuff works. Yeah, honestly, it's been a long journey and there's been a lot of smart people much smarter than me working on it for like five years before I even started really hacking into it. Uh, but yeah, uh, um, like just before you approached us, the uh, NWNX team, like I think most of the server was basically taken apart and uh, we could do much anything to it, what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And then we got involved and yeah. messed that all up. So uh, <laughs> I guess uh, we can get into NWX in, in a minute here, but before we do, um, so the Neverwinter Vault, um, tell me the story about how that came to be such an amazing repo of community content. Like, how did you get involved with that? Well, quite obviously, it's amazing because the people who actually run it, which is not me, are amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, the vault was originally run by IGN, and they kind of just went and shut down on us. Yeah, I remember that. It was the whole Adrenaline Vault concept. They had vaults for uh, all kinds of games as well. Um, yep. They yeah. were trying to compete with, I think, Game Spot or no? Who did all the planet sites? Uh, yeah, Einstein? absolutely. And um, in the end, it was just a bit of a mess. It was added fested, mm -hmm. and there was like Trojans on it and stuff. And then there was this amazing person called Rolu who went and saw, okay, this is not going to work. I'm going to just download it all, get some volunteers, and just stand up our own version of it. And that's really worked out. And uh, yes, it has. It's uh, the go-to place for a galaxy of user-generated content. There's modules and hack packs and every sort of content that you could imagine is available there. It's kind of like the Uber Steam Workshop, basically, from before the Steam Workshop even existed. Yeah, well, when, we, when we did Neverwinter Nights at Bioware, we were, this was pre-Digital Millennium Copyright Act, so we were really paranoid about hosting anything. 
So as a company, we're kind of like, oh, we can't host, so what do we do? Well, let's work with the Adrenaline Vault guys, and, and they're going to stand up this Neverwinter Vault. Let's let's support them however we can. And then, as they've said over time, they kind of got away from that. And then, of course, bad actors get involved and take over the site <laughs> and set up all sorts of junk. And I guess that was a pretty huge concern when Neverwinter first came out, is that if you're going to allow users to transfer files around like that there's always the concern that what if they use neverwinter as a vector for attacks yeah that was one of the big things with the scripting language we designed it in such a way that it would be safe it wouldn't go in and trash people's hard drive or it wouldn't uh, yeah. start executing malicious code so uh so niv what do you think is uh really really special about neverwinter nights when it comes to modding that makes it kind of unique from other games <laughs> well i'd have to say it's a vault it's a community who who does all this amazing stuff we're up to like uh, three terabytes of content, and that's uh, wow. after deduplication. So uh, that's, that's a lot of stuff and a lot of things that people have built. Wow, I had and, no idea it was that big. And that's after dedupe. That's amazing because deduplication is amazing in terms of its ability to save space. So when you say, "Oh, it's three I, terabytes kind of, of, kind, of deduped. kind of sort of," because uh, people uh, tend to rar or zip their files up, so that kind of throws a wench into it. But mm, right. Still, it's a, it's a lot of content, uh, and I think that's unique to the game as it is because it's just so open and moddable and approachable. That's, uh, I haven't seen it anywhere else yet. So uh, what kind of new things do you think uh, people are going to be doing with the Enhanced Edition with all of the modding tools that we've been adding? Um, honestly, much of the same as before, I hope at least. Like we're adding new stuff to the core game that will improve modding, like the new material support. Mm -hmm. But... It'll actually take time to materialize uh, in the game itself, uh, in the in the content itself that people are building, because they need to, to figure it out, what to do with it, uh, right. how to make it look good. And uh, honestly, we have a lot of work to do on the tooling front as well. So Absolutely. we'll have to support the guys for it. Yeah, we just uh, we just added another ex Bioware guy to the team on the tool side. We got uh, Pete Wodiak, who used to work. His, one of his first jobs at Bioware was writing the exporter for Neverwinter. <laughs> so you could export art content from 3D Studio Max to Neverwinter. And then we threw yeah. it back at him and he's like, oh my god, I think I wrote this. <laughs> so if you worked on Neverwinter Nights originally, everybody on that team, for them, time is a flat circle <laughs> that just goes around again we, and again. We will find you and you will join <laughs> yeah, the I, team. I couldn't imagine this possibly being a good experience to have, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> You know, it's it's fun to go back and uh, atone for the sins that you performed 15 years ago. I think ago. there's very few things in the world like looking at code and saying, what is this? Oh, God, I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to ask you about something really, really big here, and uh, it's NWNX. So first of all, what is NWNX, and how does it fit in with Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition? Okay, so I'm not going to pronounce that repeatedly, so I'm just going to call it Nixie, like, like I'm trying to put through in this card. Um, so uh, Nixie is a extender. It, it hooks into the game with uh, black magic and mm -hmm. adds stuff to it that couldn't be done with uh, just the modding tools. Mm -hmm. Like things like database access or web access or uh, um, linking servers, that kind of stuff. So basically a, an incredible tool chest for... Uh doing things with Neverwinter Nights that it previously couldn't do. And tell me a little bit about the origins of, uh, are you calling it Nixie? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> um, like the, the extender for the, for the enhanced edition is called NWNXEE. -E. Okay. Um, like squash it, it's like Nixie. Nixie, all right, I'll call it that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it rolls off smoothly. <laughs> so um, I think it uh, it grew with Avalis, which is a, um, a persistent world network for for the original game mm -hmm. and it came about fairly soon after the re release of the original game like they immediately went to it and saw like this is something we need to do we want uh, my sequel access and that kind of stuff and then uh, just went and added it and they open sourced it and that was a huge part of why it grew and why i think it's uh, actually part of why uh, nwn is so popular on these oh textiles. absolutely yeah yeah, it really added that capability to take it from kind of what we originally planned and, and even pull it more into that idea of being able to run your own little mini MMO. Yeah, so, it's like it's it's opened the door to actually running servers with uh, 200 people on it. That just wasn't possible before. Yeah. 
That was actually the thing that excited me the most when Neverwinter Nights was first announced, because I think I saw the exact same E3 video that you did, and I was equally excited. Was that, yeah. you know, in that, in that era, um, MMOs, I mean, universally, they were still like 10, 15 bucks a month to play. And, you know, Neverwinter Nights comes along and it's like, hey, there's a million little tiny MMOs here with a million custom servers. And I was so enamored with that. And uh, it lived up to the, the hype. I think so too, yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the more memorable things that you've seen people accomplish with uh, Nixie? Um. I don't know. Honestly, all the things like there's uh, people who would just add some small snippet, like, for example, setting names on player characters. And um, it doesn't sound like a huge deal, but people just took it and ran with it and explored all the options of it, built these huge disguise systems that enhanced role play a lot. And I have seen those. I think really that, cool. I think that's uh, just the most awesome thing is like giving people the freedom to work with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we were talking earlier, you were talking about the, the Neverwinter Vault and Rolo. And uh, Rolo used to be huge in the community back when we were still running it from Bioware. So I was always interacting with Rolo, and then I ran into him again when we started doing the Enhanced Edition. And I was like, this is a time loop. I am repeating things. <laughs> yeah, I'm still talking to Rolo on Twitter on occasion. Not recently, though. Um, He's um, sadder, so he's kind of moved on. He's okay, he's doing good, but he just doesn't want to do enough yeah. winter anymore, I think. I, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah. Well, the community, uh, I guess it's um, 15 years old now. I mean, people come and go, and it's a huge community as well. Um, I'm super impressed at how long people have stayed in touch. Like, these are friends for life in a lot of cases, and that's pretty crazy to me. That's awesome. Yeah, some of the best friends I met online in Neverwinter, actually. I guess, yeah, you know, you spend uh, 30 hours a week with these people and you're going to get pretty tight with them. Uh, 30 hours, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a shared experience. Let's it's, go with 30. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a filter. It's By all seeking out the same thing, you're already kind of predispositioned towards each other because you like the same thing. So. Fair enough. So um, what was it like coming from the modding community and kind of working on Neverwinter Nights, uh, looking in, and now transitioning over and having like direct source code access? Um, not that huge a deal, honestly, because, really? yeah, in the end of, of my community career, I'd say I've been working mostly on, on the NWNX anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's given me a lot of insight into how the engine works, how everything's connected, where the glue points are, that kind of stuff. And uh, working on the game itself is uh, very rewarding for me, at least. Like, uh, it, it's so much fun to to uh, put things into the game itself, to uh, to work on it. So, uh, what did you think when you first saw the actual uh, source for the game? <laughs> Oh my God, I regret my life choices. <laughs> Actually, it's really funny because the, the way NWNX Nixie is written, the old one, is very, very similar to how the actual game source code looks like. Yeah. So whoever started that project had some kind of insight into how it works as well. Uh, that was a fun thing. Yeah, I think when you're, when you're looking at the same problem as everybody else, uh, you'll often come to very similar solutions. Um, yeah. So Sorry. it's 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 funny to see that uh, they were on the same track. So uh, what's next for the uh, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition dev team? What are we going to see? Uh, well, that's not for me to uh, touch upon, but right. for the core team at least. Uh... So let's get Trent to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is the Trello. We look at the yeah. Trello for guidance. That uh, that controls what we do. Fair enough. So uh, before we uh, jump off here, what other games do you enjoy outside of Neverwinter Nights? Um, I don't actually play much of any games anymore these days. Like I spend all of my day working on a game. I just want to do not game stuff in the end. Fair I enough. do have like thousands of hours clocked into armor for, oh, really? for the past five years or so. Like armor one, two, and then three recently played in a group and stuff like that. And, uh, one of, I don't know what I enjoyed most recently is into the breach. I think. Oh yeah. 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 The new subset uh, game. And XCOM before that, and Fast and Light, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, what, I, what I would like to do is play the new Battletech game, 
but I don't have the time for it. Oh. And I'm not going to buy it. Like It's just the, well, the millionth game I'm buying and never playing. I, I, I bought it. I, I'm playing it, and uh, I would, if I were you, I'd wait for a patch. I think it needs a little love. We should live stream Trent playing it so you can get the experience of enjoying oh, the man. game. When, when I get four or five swear words deep in one sentence, it's bad. You'll see how often he <laughs> saves gums. It's not called saves saves coming. It's called working with the systems allowed. Sure, sure. Campaign optimization. (laughs) (laughs) So if you could build an expansion pack for Neverwinter Nights, what would you want to see in that? So, um, yeah, I uh, actually gave this one some thought. Um, Have you played Lords of Waterdeep, the board game? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, Something like this. I'd like to have a... um, some kind of module you can run with your friends and play basically the board game, but you have to actually act out all the intrigue, the backstabbing, yeah. the dealing, like have all these locations built into the game, have the maps you can walk around, and you have to role play it for it to work. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You and I are on a very similar track in terms of uh, this concept. Yeah. That's uh, it's a very cool idea that uh, we were interested in pursuing. Um, so, uh, I guess we have to ask a very, very important question of why cheetahs? Uh, why anything? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like cheetahs. They, they're kind as far as great cats go. And they, mm-hmm. uh, they endanger it. They've been mistreated by humanity for most of the time. Like they're being hunted for the fur and for the pattern. And I think that's not okay. Yeah. And they're also really like, cute. And they just click with me as, as a spirit animal. I suppose you could say so. I mean, yeah. I don't think anyone can active, actively say that they dislike cheetahs. If they do, I would question what's going on in their brains. I, I think there was that one family that got out in the safari park and they oh were being God. actively chased by cheetahs. I think okay, they Nick, probably don't like Did you see them. that video? There was, there was a safari park where you could like drive your car through it and there's like cheetahs and other wild animals just laying around. And the instructions are don't get out of your car because you could harm the animals or they could harm you. And this, uh, this one car is behind another car, and the other car, the family with the child, gets out to get up close to these cheetahs to take pictures. And the people in the other car are like, oh my god, what are they doing? This is insane. And then the, the first car goes elsewhere, but the cheetahs follow them and start stalking them. And uh, they actually attack the family, and they have to get back to the car. Yeah, well, they never attack. They no, chase they, them. I and think they took a swipe at the kid. Yep. Yeah. But uh, that, that was about it. The moral yeah. of the story is... Cheetahs, cheetahs don't really attack humans. Yeah. The moral like, of the story is don't be a do. dumb human. I think the cheetahs were just interested and very curious. Yeah, they've been domesticated in the past. And honestly, cheetah is the only great cat I'd have literally no fear of approaching. Really? Like, yeah. I think I could like deal with them properly. That's fair. I've Tiger seen... or lion, on the other hand, please. Oh, God. <laughs> I've seen some cheetahs get paired with uh, golden retrievers because the dog often calms them down. And those cheetahs are pretty much dogs. Like, they're very, very yeah, they're friendly. Yeah, dog cats. Yeah. Like, I really want one. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can get you a cheetah. <laughs> you, might, you might have to find a place for it, but uh, we'll see what yeah, we can do. Yeah, I've looked up the regulations in Germany and forget it. <laughs> no chance. Fair enough. All right, Niv, uh, I think this has been fantastic. Are there any shout-outs that you want to do while you have us on the stream here? Well, um, the community in general, of course, everyone on Discord. Like, you people are really awesome. Keep yes, doing they it. they are. Yeah. So, yeah, big shout-out to the Neverwinter Nights community. You guys are awesome. And, uh, Niv, thank you very, very much for joining us. This has been a very fun chat. It has. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, we will chat with you later. I think yep, uh, we soon. should wrap this up by giving away a t-shirt. Oh, and uh, I think we're going to do a pin as well. I think we are going to give away a so pin. This, so what is this pin? This, this is a new thing that this, we have. This is a new thing. I will hand it to the hand of Dan. Behold the hand of Dan, for it is mighty. Behold the hand of Dan. As it shows off the pin, the pin is... A brass-backed skull of ball. Symbol of ball. Symbol it's of not ball. his skull. I know it's not his you skull. Can't just it's rip a skull, out his skull symbol of ball, dude. You don't need to be you, so you, literal. You gotta, you gotta do the lore right, man. You don't need to be so literal. All right, so, so the uh, t-shirt and, and pin, the pin. We're going to give away a t-shirt and a pin. To woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. That's how you have to pronounce it. I see. Yeah. You got you to gotta do that mouth thing woo-hoo. that you were doing? 
There you go. So you won, and uh, please don't stab yourself when you're putting the pin in. It's one of those things that has a little backing bit. Yeah. So you got to take it off, and then you do. Oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> so back in the day, we actually had Neverwinter Nights pins that were made by the art director, Mark Holmes. He had a friend who was a jewelry maker, and uh, he actually made the I symbol, which is that sucker that symbol and then there was an n and he made them for the dev team and uh, i proudly wore mine for a number of years until they essentially eventually broke off and i lost both Is it like having a little american flag pin to show your support for neverwinter nights only orders of magnitude better there you go patow uh, uh question from the audience how much would you have liked the infinity games to have gone through the same remastering as the Monkey Island Enhanced Editions, and how insanely complicated slash expensive would that have been to do? Um, So, A, I would have loved it to death, and that was actually, I think, That was the plan. So the plan was to do a Baldur's Gate HD and not a a Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So we actually put the deal together around this HD concept, and everything was progressing nicely. Bioware gives us the drop, and none of the art assets are there. Yep. Absolutely zero. The whole plan hinged on upgrading the old assets. As well, the plan was to take the old assets, re-render them at like four yeah. x the resolution, and then slam them into the game and have the game just look way, way better. Yeah. The problem being, none of the source art existed, so we actually had to work backwards from what was there. Later on, when we did uh, Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition, when we inherited that archive. Some of the models were present, but probably like less than 30% yeah, of them overall. Yeah, probably like 15, 20%. Um, some of the archives had been corrupted, and the only backup that still existed was the corrupted one. So just yep. huge swaths were, were no longer functioning. Yep. Um, for example, you know the, uh, the classic uh, image, the digital painting of Irenicus sitting in his chair, and he's got Elazim and the little uh, snow globe thing going on, and he's just kind of looking at her. So we found the original source PSD for that piece of art, but it's got all these crazy color bands across it because there's been some pretty crazy corruption. Yep. Um, and it's not really fixable. You would Thank have to go Thank you, in. Microsoft Source Safe, for your rock solid archival and protection there's a lot of, of our valuable data. To. Thank you, Maxter, maybe. I don't know. Thank you, uh, NTFS, for. Uh, I don't know. Generally, one would assume that archive means preservation. Not that I'm bitter or anything. So that's kind of what happened with Baldur's Gate HD, and then we pivoted over to uh, the Enhanced Edition because, yeah. to address the second part of your question, redoing all of that art would have been insanely expensive. Yeah, we actually budgeted it out as basically about 4x the actual dev budget that we yeah. had. So now, like, knowing and how that was popular... Just the, that was just the art asset, so we would have had to then as well spend the money to actually improve the code. Yeah. So it would have been a massive, massive, massive expense. Like, do you remember uh, Squaresoft? I guess it's Square Enix now. For years and years and years, they said, we can't remake Final Fantasy VII because it's so flippin' big that to build it at the quality levels of 20-whatever is too expensive to justify. Um, So they had the exact same problem, and now their solution was, hey, okay, we'll remake Final Fantasy VII as a slightly different game, and we're also going to split it into multiple parts. So even they are not immune to uh, wanting to do this, but not being able to. Yep. Which is unfortunate. Uh, Another question here. Uh, Any progress on the container limit for Neverwinter Nights modules? I'm assuming this is referring to the the number of assets that you can reference in a a, like a hack and extensions. Um, Again, it's one of those things we're looking at. If it's on the Trello, it gets looked at. All you got to do is change an int to unsigned int, and then watch where all the data blows up. Because it needs the sign. Uh, last question before we give away a final T-shirt and a final pin: uh, Is Black Pits Three possible? Well, anything's possible. I think Black Pits Three is mandatory. Well, that's true. I think we got to do that. But would we do it in the Infinity Engine? Probably not. Probably not. We'd probably do something else. I want to. I want to come back to Bailoth. I love that guy. He's hilarious. Yep. Bailoth. Mark. Mark, Mark did a bang Mark up did job. An incredible job. Um, Bailoth hilarious. He's a drow too, which means that he's long lived. Um, yep. And also, at the end of Black Pits Two, spoiler alert, if you uh, if you haven't beaten it yet, he abducts the party because he was skulking around in the background, collecting and hoarding all these insanely powerful magical artifacts. So there's no reason he couldn't show up in you know third edition, fifth edition. He gets around. Bailoth's a player. All right, so. 
I guess we should uh, start wrapping up the stream here because right after the Beamdog stream is the fireside chat with one Nathan Stewart, whose identity I will be assuming next weekend as I uh, kill him and take it. Um, he's going to be talking about D&D. He's probably going to be revealing some cool things about the upcoming stream of Many Eyes, and he will probably mock me quite a bit for uh, dressing up as Rasad and marching around shirtless. So next weekend, if you live in L.A. or the surrounding area... And he, will, he will mock you less if you wax. If I what? If you get a wax, dude. It's one of the... He'll mock <laughs> you less, but others will, and it's... I got, I got to look at different <laughs> waxing. I got to see if Nair is an option. Uh, this is a whole <laughs> new field for me. Um, so if you're in L.A. and you want to come to the stream of Many Eyes, there are tickets for sale on the third day on Sunday. Yes. Um, there, it's open to the public, but you have to buy tickets. Yep. So Google it. Check out the stream of Many Eyes uh, page on Watsi's website, Wizards of the Coast's website. Sorry. And uh, if you're interested, go check it out. Yeah, it should be a fun thing. Um, there's a lot of the streaming groups are going to be there. Yeah. Uh, Joe Maginello's group's basically there. Basically, all the D&D &D celebs are going to be yeah, there. Yeah, I think uh, Deborah Ann Wall is actually running a, a, her first D&D &D session. That's right. So that should be pretty interesting to watch. Yep. Um, and, of course, uh, a bunch of people from Wizards of the Coast are going to be there. Yep. Uh, people, Chris Perkins, Mike Merles, all these cool guys that are really crunchy with the rules and will probably all have a lot of fun. All these lovely humans. Today. Lovely. Yes. So other than that, Beamdog is still hiring. Please check out our listings on the job page. If you live in Edmonton or are willing to relocate, we are interested in chatting with you. And as well, uh, Beamdog.com has been refreshed. We have a variety of games on sale right now. Please go check it out. If you live outside of North America in some impressively distant country, uh, please check it out because we've added all kinds of new payment options. So uh, for those of you with Electron debit cards or perhaps some sort of bean system we support you now and we you totally support you or rather exola does and we use them all right before we go final shirt and pin the winner of a neverwinter nights enhanced edition t-shirt and a Baldur's gate pin that i am holding awkwardly right here you can't see it cause dixon it. cider 85 dixon cider 85 you win buddy and and these are spiffy pins i like them also, what it's what's it like being uh, what thirty three now? Eighty five. <laughs> Eighty five. Young young children. All right, guys, we're gonna end things. We'll see you next week at the stream of many eyes. Uh, actually, I guess you'll see us on the Wizards of the Coast stream because yep. uh, we won't be streaming, but you'll see us. So if no. you see Rasad wandering around in the background, it uh, it's gonna be me. Oh, um, one thing we kind of forgot to announce that. Uh, we're shipping the 8174 build on up. Dev branch. The, the beta is up on Dev Branch. So yeah. we'll test it out. If everything's solid, that could become our next stable release. Yeah, we're looking at stable real soon here. So go check it out in the Dev Branch 8174 on Steam, on Beamdog. Yep. And we will see you soon. Yep. So Talk to you later, guys.